Jane Slaven is an actress and a writer. You may have seen her on your TV screens in things such as Clocking Off, Coronation Street, The Bill and various episodes of Casualty over the years amongst many others. She's also done a lot of acting on stage and also on the airwaves in radio dramas. She's also a writer. She's written her own novel, Writing on the Water, which came out in 1998. And uh, she's written quite a lot for Big Finish as well in series such as Survivors and Atta Girl. Big Finish is also important to Jane because she acts in a lot of it too. As well as acting in those series she wrote for, she also has done extensive work with the Fourth Doctor as various different characters over the years in the Big Finish Fourth Doctor range. And it's that range that brings the new opportunity for her because as well as now playing various random characters, January 2019 introduces her as Anne Kelso, the brand new companion to the Fourth Doctor in the audio adventures. The Fourth Doctor's first audio originated companion. So very exciting stuff. She was kind enough to sit down with me so that I could ask her all about it and some other things about the rest of her career too. Jane, thank you very much for coming along and Absolutely. doing this interview. Um, so you are the new Fourth Doctor companion Yes, I in am. the Big Finish Audio Adventures. And it's actually going to happen now. It's yeah. actually weeks away instead of two it and a half years away. It's out in January, isn't it? January yeah. 2019. I mean, yeah, obviously, everywhere. this video will be up forever, hopefully. So so people may be watching this in two oh, years' God. time, in which case it was out years ago. But, uh, but yeah, out in January 2019, you play yeah. Anne Kelso, who is the new companion to the Fourth Doctor. Yeah. Uh, what can you tell us about her? Yeah, nothing basically. So that's the end of the interview. <laughs> well, you can tell us what, you know, at least what's been in, been released so far. She's a police officer. She is a police officer. Uh, it's 1978. She, uh, all I can say is that, you know, she enters into it with a state of, with a, with a, with a, an attitude of wonder and excitement, but also, yeah, come on, bring it on. Um, which I love. It's, so it's set in well the first your first episode your characters from nineteen seventy eight. Yeah. Um, I, I sm imagine that's an era when women police officers weren't necessarily treated as okay. equals. Yeah, I mean I, I'm not I'm not even sure they are now, but definitely not then. She, you know she'd have been like a tea girl i mean not not just a tea girl there would have been various things she would have been allowed to do but respect she would have not had the respect mm. and does that play into the the stories at all i suppose she's kicking against she would be kicking against it anyway and she but she doesn't have to with the doctor because of course this is what's wonderful about the doctor that in every era he's been as far as i'm aware i didn't i don't know the early ones but it's all about equality, really, isn't it? And everybody gets a chance, and even the villains he he will treat with, you know, it would never, it would never be horrific to anybody, would he? Mm. She, as she, she now is, yeah. yeah. I mean, I keep getting you know nice messages from people saying, "Oh, I'm excited about it." I, I'm kind of, you know, I want it to be, I want it to be what people want you know and you can't please everybody obviously but and i think i think it is i think it's i think it's good storylines and and it's me and tom i mean i was kind of blinded by that a bit really you know i've probably done anything but you know whatever they'd said i'd have gone oh yeah okay then i'll do it because it's not your first time acting against tom for big finish actually you've done i looked at the list and there's quite a lot of, of... loads do you know how many no, no, because there are also ones that aren't released yet. There are ones that I I think it's no secret that um, I read in for some people as well. When we record in separate studios, I, if, they, if they need someone to read in, I'm like, I'll do it just to spend a day with Tom. So how would you describe your relationship with Tom then? You've known each other now for a few years. Uh, Seven years, yeah. I just, he's so, we just laugh. I've said this so many times, but we just laugh so much. And he's so warm and kind and he gets me and I get him. And he's, you know, he'll come in and he'll say, oh, 
I found a poem and he'll, he'll just read this poem to us all or recite it because he's, you know, he likes to learn something every week. He likes to, he's so well oiled. Um, but my relationship with him is we're good, really good friends. We don't see each other in between jobs, you know, we've both got busy lives. Um, but I adore him. I just adore him. And he behaves like he adores me, so great. This isn't the first time you've played a police officer, is it? You had a stint in the bill one uh, once upon oh, a time, yes, didn't you? I did. Um, did any? I've forgotten about that. Did, did any? Well, uh, that probably answers my question then, because I was going to ask: um, <laughs> Does any of this? Did any of that feed into how you portrayed uh, Anne? <laughs> no, no. Well, that was a quick answer no. then. <laughs> I didn't honestly. I was thinking: When did I play a police officer? Was it in Clocking Off? I was a nurse in Clocking Off. No, um, no, I don't. No, I don't. I barely remember. I, I, I did it for about six months, but also I was a, I think I was a made up rank. I think I was detective superintendent. I'm not even sure there is such a thing. I was just a boss that came into, and and, and Anne is not a boss. She, she kind of is mentally, but she's not a boss at all. She's just what would then be a WPC. So going back to the fact that you've played quite now quite a lot of different characters for Big Finish, most of them I think against Tom as the Doctor, um, and then one was there one against John Hurt? Did oh you... yeah, I did. I did John Hurt. No, I've, I've, I've worked <laughs> with John Hurt. That was amazing. Oh my god, um, Colin Baker. I've worked with David Tennant separately from Big Finish on, but on the radio. Um, I haven't worked with Sylvester. I have had dinner with him. Does that count? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Peter Davison, I've worked with on a BBC radio comedy, but not, not as. Um, and of course now I'm kind of I've slapped it around so much I can't say you know, I, it would be crazy for me to turn up with all the doctors. <laughs> we, need to, we need to end up in one of the anniversary specials, don't you? That's uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The next for the sixtieth. That's what, that's your aim. Be in yeah. the sixtieth anniversary special, and then you can you can be in uh, be on the screen with all well on 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 screen. What's the equivalent on the air with um, all the other doctors that are still around, and probably some recordings yeah. of some other ones. I'd love that so much. Can you make that happen? <laughs> oh, I wish I had the power to make that happen. That'd be great. Um, yeah. How did this role come about? Well, we'd because, partly because of uh, my friendship with Tom. We got we did just get we got on so well from day one. I mean, we were laughing from day one. The first photograph we had taken, I think, I wrapped my arms around him like I love you because he does inspire that, and and also because people are quite. Oh, and I was like, ah, he's mine, he's mine. <laughs> I loved him so much. So then they got me in again really quickly to play some alien or I don't know an old woman or and then I had done so many and then one day I got a, a text message. He told me by text David Richardson who text we text each other all the time anyway and then one of these texts said oh you know we're thinking of writing a new companion for Tom and I nearly died of heartbreak because I thought. Who is it going to be? It's going to be Sheridan Smith or someone. I'm going to hate them forever. And then he, and then he said, "No, it's you, you dickhead," or something similar, something more insulting. So, and it, and it was partly to do with you know I'd been there so often, mm. and part of that family. And even Dorney said, "God, you're here more than I am." And so I guess I was just there so much they thought they should. I don't know. It, it was it was gorgeous and of course you're the first original companion for tom in the audios aren't you because every other time he's had his companions from the tv show so you're the first uh, yeah. one that's originated on the audios yeah do you um do you think that might i think we're going to read out some texts uh, some tweets even later on that, and this may be one of the questions well, from that can we read so, mean tweets like on Jimmy i don't Kimmel. think we got mean tweets yeah. we all we got lovely questions that's what we got you might have some mean tweets but uh, <laughs> well, if you want to get your phone out, you can, yeah, you no, can read I'm those out if you that. want. Um, uh, one of the questions, and I think it might have been, if I uh, I'll try and credit them. Oh, yeah. Uh, South Park 33 Gaming um, asked, would you like to play your character on TV? 
which I think is there's an obvious answer for that. And it's a yes. <laughs> of course. But I, I don't think any of the audio companions have made, or any original audio, and that may be a rights thing, yeah. the, have made the transition the other way around from audio to TV. Um, but you could, you never know, you could Maybe. be the first. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's because I've got a face of a radio. Maybe they wouldn't want me on telly. I don't know. The the older you get as a female, the the more they think, yeah, no, it's it's over for you. You know, I don't feel that now. I feel vital and happy and you know ready. But you do get fewer and fewer parts. You know, you want to say to people, I was a lead, <laughs> but you know it it will change hopefully but at the moment if you're a middle-aged woman the chances of you getting on telly certainly in you know playing that part it would be amazing but it would be a long shot um you mentioned dave richardson earlier he's the producer of the this new box set um in in the recent vortex magazine um, he in the article about this very box set, yeah. he said that you he, he described you as one of the most experienced radio actors in the country. Yeah. Um, what is it you love so much about audio drama? I don't know. I, you know, it was da- I was ta- it was talking to David Richardson. I realised when I was about four or five, we always had Radio Four on in the house. We always had the dramas on, and also I was brought up listening to an, an LP. Or, I don't know if it was my parents being slack or anything, but they used to just put this LP by my bed of Wendy Craig reading stories. And I used to, and I learnt all these stories, and then I would re-record them, and then I would add another track of music with me playing some kind of instrument. This is like at six or seven, so, I mean, they were poor. but And I would make my own radio play. Didn't even, it didn't even occur to me that I'm sitting there doing Big Finish and today I've just been in the BBC doing a radio it didn't occur to me that oh I've actually got what I wanted you know be content this is this is everything I wanted so it was always you know, I always used to have a tape recorder you know and I'd have three tape recorders so I could tape on record on another and then and then play it and then record that and then add things and so I guess that's why I love it I don't know it I don't I don't know how it started except that I was exposed to it and thought ooh, ooh, my imagination's going all mental and you can you know the costumes are better everything's better on the radio isn't it because it's in your head you, you've you mentioned there you you've been recording a, a BBC One today. You've done a lot of work with the BBC uh, radio drama stuff as well, and I know that there's a, a big difference in the recording styles of, of Big Finish and and um, yeah. and BBC. Uh, a lot of people probably don't like, that doesn't cross their minds. But can can you give a sort of very very you know very quick summary of like what are the main differences? How do, how Big Finish record? How do Big Finish record versus how do the BBC record? Well, the main difference is. You know, I the, my I remember my very first big finish day, and I turned up with hard soled shoes. You've got to have shoes that make a clip clippity clop sound. Um, so I turned up with those, and assuming that we're going to be, you know, you, if 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 it's a if you're having a drink of water, this is how you're having a drink of water. You know, you'll, you you act it out, and you're, you know, if this was the scene, this is how it would be, and there'd be a microphone in the middle. A big finish. You're in a little box sometimes i am in a box they put me in a box as punishment um they, they, you're just in your own little booth and you can see other people but you can't everything is isolated so that they that which means that they can drop in a voice or take out a voice if for instance say someone's reading in for romana for example or something like that you know they can just lift them out and then put the the yeah, so, the, so there's in. benefits to sort of both both techniques. Yeah, really. no. So the more so the more acted uh, BBC style, where you're moving around the room and such. Yeah, it's yeah. very much happening at that. You know, there's they still have sound designers for each, but like the sound designers at Big Finish do so much because they'll also change the acoustic. We just rec- at Big Finish, you just record the same. You know in the same environment but in the BBC if it's outdoors you go into a dead room if it's um, you know if it's meant to be in woods you're walking around on bits of 
chopped up tape from the 80s or my performances from 1996 I've walked on them you know so it's yeah it's weird they but they're both I couldn't choose oh, don't make me choose I couldn't choose between them what do you have a um out of all the the work you've done that's not big finish do you have a a, a favorite audio drama you've been in or something that particularly resonated with you or yeah, Homefront. I, well, I mean, it was one of many, but Homefront recently was four years, and I th- and I was in every season playing a different character. Occasionally, they would bring back the same character, but they would always be. I was in every, and it was such a. I, it's just to be a part of it because the scripts were so brilliant. You've got Katie Hims and Sarah Daniels and um, Sean McKenna and. God, I'm gonna miss people out now, so I just shouldn't say any, shouldn't say any more. Um, but they were, it was such top quality, and and then listening to it, I actually listened to. It. I don't don't listen to most of them, but I actually listened to it, and it was just phenomenal achievement. Four years of the First World War. Yeah, because for those that that may probably haven't heard of Homefront, it's a series that went every it was 15 minute episodes, and every episode was aired the day 100 years after the day was set and it charted basically the period of the war while at, at the home front mm. um so you how many so you play, came back as several different characters in that yeah, about 15 wow <laughs> <laughs> and again yeah. did that feel much like with the doctor who stuff which i asked earlier <laughs> coming back and playing different characters did that feel strange or did you do you, were you never playing one character long enough to to really feel like it was strange to play a different one it didn't feel strange oh. I don't know why that is. I wonder if... I remember going out with a guy once and he said, God, I never know who I'm with. And maybe that's it. Maybe, I, maybe I'm not... I don't know. It's, maybe it's just boring being one person, isn't it? You think, oh, I could be Vanilla today or Julie. <laughs> I don't know. Now you've... Um, now you... Well, from January. Now you've been a companion, though. Do you think that... Does that impede your ability to be other characters now because people get so familiar with your voice as a companion that uh that it will be more difficult to play to go back and play 20 other different characters i think that and i thought yeah i said because i thought i'm have i done myself out of a load of jobs um i don't know because i have been back i have done other stuff with big finish have i yeah i have or is, is radio drama and audio drama just one of those mediums where it doesn't matter so much because people can't see your face? Yeah. So you can change your voice more than you can change your face. Does it? So does that mean it doesn't matter as much? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. And I mean, you know, they've had me playing Ancient Nun. I was literally, that was my credit, Ancient Nun, Jane Slavin. So, yeah. I, yeah, I guess I can still play lots of, uh, I bloody hope so. Now, one thing people that even are familiar with your big finish work may not know is that your Doctor Who connection goes back a lot further than even the existence of big finish yes, in radio does. drama, doesn't it? Because what, what, in the early 90s, wasn't it? You were in a, a BBC Doctor Who radio drama. Tell us a bit about that. That was called Doctor Who and the Paradise of Death. And it was with John Pertwee. And I was unfamiliar with the whole Doctor Who as this phenomena that it is phenomenon that it is so I went in thinking oh yay great old John Pertwee he wasn't he the one before Tom because Tom was mine um and Elizabeth Sladen was there and Nick Courtney and I think Brian Miller came along who was Liz's husband and it was we you know we just kind of did it and I didn't really think anything of it and then you got started getting letters I still get letters about it now I've never it's not, there's never been like a, a six month period where I've not had some kind of correspondence or a pair of knickers sent to me from um, someone who's listened to the Paradise of Death and people still come and give me the CD case or even the tape because of course it came out and I'm not even sure CDs existed then. Yeah. I think they no, they did just, but it came out on cassette. Sorry, I've got to go back to the knickers. Who said somebody sent you <laughs> knickers? 
in the la- ladies' knickers in the yeah, mine, yeah. Not not my knickers. Were they, they weren't so, returning my knickers. But were, were they but... gifting you some new knickers, or were they yeah, yeah. knickers from somebody that? I, I've had, I've had dirty knickers, which had oh. obviously went straight in the bin, and I've had uh, brand new with shags knickers. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it was something about that character. I I've never heard it, so I don't know. Does she mention pants? Does she? You know, do I look like the sort of woman you'd want to send a pair of knickers to? They didn't even see you. They only heard you. I know. Well, that, do you yeah. sound like a uh, woman? Then? Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Oh well. So yeah, I've had quite a few knickers and scarves and um, yeah, just little gifts. It's quite nice. Your involvement with Big Finish stretches beyond Doctor Who as well, doesn't it? Um, mm. I know you've done some writing for them. You've mm-hmm. you've written and uh, also appear in the. Uh, Big Finish original series at a girl, mm-hmm. and they have uh, survivors. You mentioned earlier. I, I yeah. didn't catch that one in my looking up stuff beforehand. But what, what, how much have you been involved in the survivors series? The survivors. I wrote episode two of season eight, and it was. Um, this is just about to come out now. I think it's yeah any day. There's definitely a review copy out there, so I know it's I know it's imminent. Um, and we went back to. I don't, do you know the series? I know the original series. I haven't listened to any um, of the big finish stuff. You would love it. I might have to slip you a CD or something. You yes, really please. would <laughs> love it. It's great. Um, not my episode, but my episodes are great too. But no, it's a fabulous series. As David Richardson said, it's one of the things he's most proud of. Um, so I wrote episode. So eight, eight season eight is like six seven years into the death so after the death so they're trying to rebuild stuff but i was given the task it was just such a great task of going back to the beginning with one particular character to show what happened to him and his family and i was kind of given not free reign because obviously you've got to um terry nation the the terry nation estate vets it first so you can't just ride roughshod over any of the conventions or anything but I would I could I could invent these people it was just I loved it I loved it and so I wrote myself a part like you do and um I wrote Wendy Craig a part who you didn't know I didn't know yeah in our pre pre pre-interview chat you mentioned an actress I didn't know Um, a wonderful my hero who got me into radio because I was left you know all night long listening to this album of her reading stories so um I asked Ken Bentley who was directing it if she could you know I said I've written this part for her and he's like oh no Wendy Craig I don't think so I don't think she'll she'll do it she's probably not available she's 80 you know um and I wrote her a letter I said please will you you know, I wrote this for you, and she said, "Yes, of course I'll do it." Phoned me like two days later. I was like, <laughs> "Amazing!" Yeah. Um, Big Finish have also done an audio book of your own novel from, uh, which I think was first published in nineteen ninety eight, "Writing on the Water." Yeah. Um, actually, when I when I I didn't know about it before I listened to the audio book. I bought the oh, audio book okay. and listened to it, but I um I didn't realize it was a pre existing yeah. um novel. I thought it was a fairly new novel but it was one you'd released a while ago yeah um was that did that come about because of your relationship with the company generally because you'd done so much with them well it it was literally just that david richardson who is my friend now out of interest and curiosity decided to read the book and he loved it and he said do you want to do it oh why don't you do it on audiobook has it been done i was like great so I did, but then it's so it's such an intimate, dark piece of you know my, my oh god. So then sitting there, doing it, and knowing that people were going to hear it, and because you know when you write something, you think oh, you know they can just read it, and I don't have to I have no part in their reading, it. even if it's like dark secrets, you know or bits of my psyche that it wouldn't otherwise share you certainly wouldn't share some of the things in that book over dinner you know 
but then I had to, of course, read it in a studio with my friends listening. Lisa Bowman directed it, um, and Joe Miners was on was you know on the board, and it was, uh, it was just it was extraordinary. The novel is about a young actress, <laughs> so you know the inevitable question: <laughs> yeah. how much of it is autobiographical? <laughs> yeah, none of it. <laughs> Um, well, you know, everything, everything you, everything I write or everything I perform. Obviously, I'm still in me, so it's, yeah, it's, it's got essence of Jane in it, and there are maybe a couple of things that happen to me. But you're not going to admit which ones. <laughs> no, God, I don't blame no. you. <laughs> You've read it. No, you wouldn't. No. God, the shame. I mean, and I, re- I, I listened to a bit of it just to make sure I didn't sound terrible. I listened to a bit in my car. Oh, God, I had to pull over. I mean, because it, it's so it's so emotional and it was so weird hearing there were some things. It's about heartbreak and grief. And it's about, you know, I, I used the loss of my mum and the loss of two boyfriends to to inform the the story and it got it absolutely brought it all back i mean i was like curled up under the table by the time i got home just think i can't listen to anymore but is writing something um you're as passionate about as acting is it something you want to do a lot more of or i feel it's something i don't have a choice in i have to do it i'm always writing i've always got a notebook i've always got you know, weird little thoughts that, ooh, what if that happened? You know, or wouldn't it be funny if that did actually happen and you were, you know, terrible, dark things. I like the what if thing, the what if, the, and changing stuff and making different things happen. So I, I, I yeah, I, I feel like I have no choice. Brilliant though, of David Richardson, because it was David Richardson who said, do you want to write an episode of Survivors? and. I wasn't even sure I could. I've never written a full script. And now I've written six this year because of David Richardson. Have you, I don't know if you, have you written any Doctor Who? No. Okay. Do you, would you like to write some Doctor Who? I haven't Who? written one yet. <laughs> I thought I wasn't capable. Um, <clears throat> but then this new series of Doctor Who with Jodie and you realise that it's not it's not all about the continuums of you know the the lingo and the language it's just it is about heart and i think that with a bit of guidance from some true doctor who people you know people like you and i've got a good friend tim who's a big doctor who fan who knows everything about it that i think i might be able to do it so watch this space Ooh, watch this space indeed um, right let's get to I asked on Twitter if anybody had any questions for you so let's get to those um, I've had quite a few in actually um, so I don't know if I'll get a chance to do them all but let's see how we're doing um, the first one a very surreal one um, the gingerbread Luke on Twitter um, at llama underscore bottle zero people have the sure. funniest uh, do, Twitter names don't they ask what's your favourite verb and yeah. why I saw you actually replied to this, uh, ooh, like you didn't know, answer it. But... Ooh, because I thought, ooh, that is quite interesting, because there are so many. And I was trying to, I was trying to find a favourite one, because it's not just what it means, it's how it sounds as well, because I, I like weep, but obviously I don't want, that can't be my favourite because it's so dark. And, but I thought perhaps forgive. It's kind of hard, I find it very hard to forgive myself for many things, and... And I think that, you know, when you you see some amazing woman on TV and she's forgiven uh, the police who killed her son or something, and her life is better with that forgiveness. She is a better person. She makes everything. She makes the person who committed the crime feel better. She makes everything feel better in that act of forgiveness. So I guess to forgive. Nice verb. Um, Dr. Blue asks, what's your experience with the show? Did you watch it growing up? I watched Tom 
And then I was, I'm sorry to say, because I love Peter, but when it changed into Tristan, that's, you know, because he was in All Creatures Great and Small at the time. Um, <clears throat> and, I, and I thought he's all smooth and clean looking and I've never liked a clean boy. <laughs> I like Tom's duck. So even, at, you know, I don't know what I was, eight or something, but even then I was thinking, <laughs> um, I didn't, I, I, I wanted the, the um, insanity and danger of Tom's character rather than what looked like a very approachable Peter Davison. So I stopped at Peter Davison. Jack asks, um, did you base your character and performance on anyone else or did you try making it as original as possible? Oh, yeah. I don't, I don't think I've ever... I don't think I've ever based anything on someone I actually knew. I mean, sometimes it might come out. It might... Uh, like... You know, you might realise you're, you've been possessed by your Auntie Elsie or something. But no, 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 I didn't base it on anyone. Cameroon Nerd Cave, uh, sorry for butchering that, um, asked how cool was it worked with Tom Baker, one of your heroes? I think you probably already answered this, but... Yeah, very. It still is. But then, you know, I, I get in the lift here at this building. We're in Broadcasting House right now. And I get in the lift and I am never not thrilled to be in this building and I I must have been here I don't know thousands of times and it still gives me the ah, the mothership is calling me and it's the same with Tom I never I never I'm always excited the morning the night before I can't sleep I know it's always going to be fun and he's going to you know everyone's going to be excited also, because there are lots of people there. Frank Skinner. I mean, he was... Oh, he was so nice and so good. But you could hear the fear when he was first on the microphone. It was just... Oh! And it was fear and awe and wonder. He could not believe he was there. With yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I saw it because in that same Vortex interview or, or article, it said that he... Uh, he was quite fan struck by Tom as well, and um, yeah. got his uh, script signed by him and everything. She was shaking; she was like quivering. He he, he became eight. Mister Sunday uh, asks. Hello, Mister Sunday. <laughs> asks, uh, did Jane have any input into Anne's characterization? Also, was there any pressure being Tom's first companion original to the Big Finish audience? Oh yeah, yeah, the pressure's still there. Um, n- did I have any input into the character? Well, you kind of do. I didn't have any input into the plot at all. Well, I suppose if they if they cast it, well, if, they, if they wrote it for you, yeah. um, then I suppose they were basing it on your what they knew you could do anyway. So in in that yeah. sense, it's it's kind of you having an input, even if you weren't yeah. looking over the script and going, oh, I think this and that. Yeah, and they did ask me where did I want to set it? Where did I want to set her earthly life? You know what, like what accent did I want to play for? However many episodes, however many years, you know what? You find something you're comfortable with. Don't do Geordie. <laughs> um, so, so I guess, but no, I, no, I think they, you know, those the way they storyline stuff at Big Finish is so they they are meticulous. They're all they're all experts in the Doctor Who arena. I mean, they're all, pretty much all of them, proper Doctor Who fans. They were all... So they're, they're all walking around in wonder, really, going, oh, look at my job. Gallifrey Forever 97 asks, what was the material you went back and watched in preparation for the role? Did you go back and watch any of Tom's TV stories, for example? No, because we'd done so many together and I had seen him as the Doctor so many times either on audio or um watching him on telly but she hasn't ever met him so it serves no purpose for her to know what he's like adam the whovian says uh 
how enjoyable has this journey been from recording to meeting fans? He says he met you in Chiswick in February and you were lovely. Oh, thank you. Um, the Sopranos, the, the, the Sopranos, the fans never cease to surprise me at how lovely and generous and kind and, you know, I know they're meticulous. I know there are like spats on forums and things and they disagree and everything. And But they're so, they so want it to be good. You really feel like they're willing you on. I've never felt like I was an interloper or that, you know, I've never felt anything less than really, really welcomed. And I've done loads of big finish days now. And and that signing, that telly day in Chiswick, um, which was different because it was just a big queue of, you know, sign, 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 like. At those um, signing type things, um, do you get it much chance to, to interact with the fans? Or is it sort of, is it like that? Is it very much like, oh, got to sign this, get the next one? Oh, I always try. Um, unless there's there are some that are so painfully shy and I don't want to, I can be a bit overbearing, I think, and a bit intimidating. I don't want to intimidate anyone. Um, and I do it purely by accident. Um, so I would, you know, I would just, let them be if they don't want to talk but yeah no you there, there's always an opportunity to talk and there's always twitter i'm always god i'm always on twitter i've got to i've got to cut down it's terrible so you know you can and, and lots of people approach you they want to talk or they want to you know or they just want you to to say something nice about tom it's lovely i mean it's been a it's been fantastic but yeah the pressure is enormous and the uh doctor who guide asks what's your favorite memory slash experience from working on the audios oh god i thought you meant of my life of your whole life (laughs) (laughs) um i think meeting tom for the first time because he was he was kind of a hero not so much from doctor who but over the years i've seen him um, interviewed and just thought I wish he was my friend you know like you see someone you think they should be my friend we would get on really well and then I met him and we were um, he, he is as lovely as I imagined uh, as he comes across on TV he's the, you know he's not he's not a disappointment um, so that and also I have to say Meeting David Richardson and Nick and Ken and all the people, the big Finnish people, I honest, they are like, I feel like they're my family. Only, I was going to say only better then, but that some of my family are still alive, so I apologise to them. Um, yeah, they've, no, they've... Just don't send the link to this video. <laughs> no, I won't. They, um, it'll be the one link that my dad actually clicks on. There we go. Anyway, uh, yeah. So meeting, meeting the big Finnish people. They're amazing. You know, they champion women. They champ. They've championed me. They've been. You know, they want to give people opportunities. They want. You know, I said there was one time when I think I was the only female, and I said to David Richardson, you know, if, if they're not like rampant sex offenders, they could just be women. So we could just have fifty fifty pretty much that's what he does now you know they they want everything to be right and fair and good and the best it can be it's it's great and it's the, and it's the, also the same with the script process because now i've got some experience of that writing scripts with them um yeah they're clearly they have the same ethics with that and uh, the other thing I hear about <clears throat> working at Big Finish is the infamous lunches, which apparently uh, are, are amazing. They are amazing. However, oh, do we have a dissenter <laughs> in the ranks of the lunches? We record uh, in Wadhurst. Should I say what? I don't want. I don't want anyone to. I think. I think it's known that we record in Wadhurst. Anyway, we record the Tom stuff in Sussex. Toby is in the Labrick Grove studios. So you don't you don't get the lunches? No. Oh. We still get a fantastic lunch. 
David Richardson will order in from Waitrose, you know, the most fabulous array of fish and <laughs> mainly fish actually. Um, you know, and cake and stuff. But it's but yeah, Toby. We so we get the great lunches on Survivors. They are fabulous. Um, and the final tweet question we had was, um, how would you characterise the nature of the relationship between the fourth Doctor and Anne? Oh. Uh, he He's still a bit like mine and Tom's. He's still her hero, but they're also equals. They're a match for each other, and they're, they're very fond of each other. And... Yeah, he's still a hero, but so he's he's the one, you know. But they he, he would never, she would never be demeaned or diminished in any way by his heroism. Thank you very much for um, for coming in and doing this interview. And it's um, been a great pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you. you for asking. That's me. okay. Um, and if you want to check out this it's available for pre-order at the time i'm uh, recording this but it may well be out by the time i get the video <laughs> edited i don't know um so go onto the big finish website and order that um thank you for watching don't forget to uh, like share subscribe all that kind of jazz and uh, yeah i'll have some more doctor who related videos soon uh, goodbye <laughs>